Sensor is scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me this week, we have EJ. Somewhere. EJ. Oh, well, whatever. We got Stuart. <laughs> I think EJ has died. Yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. He's just off fixing another warp core bridge. Probably. Uh, we've got Scarecrow. Good morning. We have Amy. Morning, y'all. We have Eugene. Hello. And EJ will turn up eventually. It's not like this whole first segment's for him or anything. <laughs> so, those who don't know, this week was San Diego Comic Con. All sorts of shenanigans happened. Oh dear God, did they ever. Oh yeah. Bloody Barrowman. <laughs> oh, Barrowman. Good old Barrowman. Oh, I saw the pictures. <laughs> so, oh God. Uh, give that guy a, a, give that guy a costume and he just just makes it hilarious regardless of what it is. Brannigan. Anyway, that's your, you got to do the Brannigan in a Nixon voice. I can't really do a Nixon voice. Not Brannigan. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Um... No, it's hard doing Nixon's voice. Yeah. Um, yeah it's like... <laughs> Brennigan! <laughs> anyway. Um, and a few others. Oh, man, he, he racked out the cosplay something fierce. It was hilarious. I loved it. Um, and about 100 kajillion trailers dropped. So next week, we're going to be breaking as many of those down as we can. But we can only really sort of touch on them a little bit here. Um, so, uh, Stuart, what sort of trailers dropped just to give everybody oh, an idea god uh where do we start um where do where do we want to start let's, let's start with star, uh, let's start with star trek the new star trek discovery uh no, i think we started a low and we build up to a high uh it's not that i didn't care for it it's, that ship is ugly oh it i really know is. right like well, I, I, it's I, meant to be look, ej's gone <sighs> did I oh, be well. bagging on about the shit clearly yeah um let's see if I can bring him back although I do I do I, I do like I like that we got a title at least now yeah uh, hello hello welcome back hello you can hear me now yes yep. yes are you done talking about discovery no <laughs> okay I'll, I'll plug my ears cause I uh I'm trying to form my own opinion on it, and I haven't had a chance to see it yet because of San Diego. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, no, I just no, know no. people don't like it. That's all I know. Yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> it's based on the um, one of the concept yeah that parts. one that was floating in the background at uh, Wolf Three Five Nine. It was one of the ones that was destroyed. Kind of looks like a combination of the Enterprise and the Star Destroyer. Uh, yeah. It was, no, more like a, an, more like a combination yeah. of the Enterprise and uh, um, Klingon DS Nine. Uh, yeah, Klingon something or other. Ah, but it was made by like the guy who did the Star Destroyer or something. Um, it was done. Ralph McQuarrie. Yeah, him. So, yeah. It, it it basically just imagine, um, the the Star Trek sort of Delta insignia that they they use for their their com badge, with a saucer section on the front and two warp nacelles on the points, and you're pretty close to what this thing looks like. Kind of like the uh, that one shuttle in Enterprise, uh, where they're doing that montage in the intro sequence as they're going from like modern day or 1960s to like no uh, the Enterprise no. have that one that's very triangular. No, no. Oh, talking about the the, the Delta. Yeah. Yeah. No, not really. It's um, it's ugly as sin. Put it that way. But it was originally designed for the Star Trek the motion picture, or phase, well, Phase 2 originally, and then which eventually evolved into the motion picture. And they sort of looked at that and goes, you know what? That's a concept art we've been sitting on for the better part of 50 years. Let's use that. And the internet immediately went, 
what the hell? No. And that looks spectacular. There's a massive sort of void between the two. Half of them think it looks great, and half of them are like, go away, CBS. Let Axenar happen. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh! <laughs> actually, oh, there's a, re- there's, there's there, a the really rest- interesting... Yeah. There's a really interesting thing, actually, a, a rumor flying about of who potentially could be playing the well, um, the captain of the Discovery in um in, in the show. Please be Barrowman. Please be Barrowman. Please be Barrowman. Apparently, Sylvester Stallone's been reached out for it. <laughs> I'd like to be able to understand what the captain's what? saying. I, I, I'm sorry, but every time he's on, every time he speaks, the Universal Translator breaks. And it just sounds like <laughs> just a slurred sound. It's like it's like a human guys, guys, slug. Guys, guys, Star Trek, not nobility, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Engage. The universal translator is broken. <laughs> Again. <laughs> In fact, it is now broken. Mr. Solo. Okay. So, so uh, there's, the, the, there's there's I'm rumors sorry. that it's sort of the discovery sits. Roughly where Axanar was set, about halfway between Enterprise and um, the original series, which would explain. Wait, wait, why... it is that's official. That's official. No, no, no. That, that's that's rumors, and that's based oh, on no. the hull number. The hull number is about the same as the original Enterprise. Um, yeah, te- no, it's the hull, n- the hull number. The hull, the hull number is just under- after the original Enterprise. Yeah, the hull, but the hull number, uh, the registry number, would be based on the model class wouldn't it um uh, i'm sorry class the ship uh, the, the no. whole the whole number is based on when it was um what order it was made so the newer ships in next gen have like six digit hull uh hull numbers whereas around the tos era it's four interesting and discovery discovery's hull number is 1030 something or another yeah. so it's, it's- only 1031 yeah yeah, I remember there was ten thirty something. So, <laughs> so, so that puts yeah, it, I haven't even seen the video, and, <laughs> but everyone well, was that, bitching about it in San Diego. So that actually, that whole number actually puts it earlier than the original series. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you know one. Yeah. So, and, and that was my theory as why they came so uh, hard, so hard on, down so hard on Axanar was because they wanted to work in that same space, and that way they could avoid the whole prime universe, alternate universe, you know, yeah. shenanigans. Yeah, pretty much. And the alternate universe has a name, by the way. It's now called the Kelvin Timeline. Um, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Um, yeah. so, so that was one the of other the... Pro- yep. Go. Okay. There's one other problem I see with that. The, because of the name, it effectively shuts down um, the, uh, or it effectively causes um, the Kickstarter Star Trek Discovery is effectively can't use that name at all. Yeah. Wait, who can't? Oh, yeah, Star Trek Discovery, yeah. Wait, no, that's yeah. the new show. Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah, I'm well, it was Horizons for the first one. And he wanted to do a second one, um, but he can he can never use oh, Star yeah. Trek Discovery because of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, well, he can't really do anything that's not 15 minutes long anyway now. So yeah, right. But even even if they get Paramount to back off those draconian guidelines, um, he could not I- use Discovery. Use the, right, because of that. There are other names he could use. He could use Star Trek Expedition or something like that. Yeah. That are essentially the same thing as Discovery. Yeah. And then there's going to be the... massive um, uh, continuity errors. Because yeah. wasn't it Discovery in the first? Uh, oh, well. Yeah, well, you can't really argue with the big business when they pull, when they pull shit like this, though. Pretty much. So. Couldn't, you, couldn't you still call it Discovery and just say nope. it's a, like just like well just they like will the nail end. you to the wall for copyright breach? Yeah, they they, they could have done the same thing to continues for for actually using the same Enterprise as Kirk, but just like you had an NX Enterprise, maybe you have an NX Discovery that was the precursor to this yeah. Discovery. Yeah, exactly. Um, Possibly, but we're talking the. The, 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 paranoid the, bastards at Paramount yeah, the and point CBS. Is, the point is fairly, they will nail you to the wall. 
the point is moot anyway because they're not continuing with a sequel. They're starting their own thing as well. So it doesn't necessarily matter that much. As much as we love the guys right. over Horizons, we're, st- we're definitely going to be supporting their new project. I just can't remember what it's called because so much stuff's happened. So, EJ, you were at the Nobility booth all day. Got a little Pretty bit up, much. Up, got up close and personal with Will Smith. Do you wish? Oh, you know what? That happened when I was when I when I wasn't there. Like I I because oh. I, I, I wasn't. At the booth, I was like running around and all that. The crazy thing is, is uh, one of the announcements we made at San Diego is uh, we've attached uh, Biling to the project for uh, season two. Nice. And thank you. Yeah, and she worked with Will uh, on and, on uh, Wild Wild West, and so she had just finished her signing and left when he walked by the booth, and we're all like, "No, we could have like drawn him in or something," you know. <laughs> Oh, I was like, no, oh, no, no, no. But yeah, San Diego was awesome. Well, um, give we us, did. Give hmm? us a lowdown on what happened, because all I saw on Facebook was awesome pictures and shenanigans, and I was like, why wasn't I there? I wanted to be there. I wanted to be at my work. My work sucks. That looks awesome. Well, if you're out here, I, I, I might, 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 might have been able to get you a badge. So if you're out here next year, uh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> But um, so okay, so uh, the main event for us, well, there was there was uh, the main event for us was the red panel, uh, or red red bah, panel, red carpet uh, screening and panel that we had. I was thinking we red had, panel. Uh, what did I miss? What part of Star it, Trek? It was that what bad. Part of... Red alert, you know. No, no, no. no. It just turned stuff. into the red wedding. No, no, no. I, I, I'm thinking <laughs> the red panel. Who survived? And were they wearing clothes? No one. Oh, we were victorious. The <laughs> battle was ferocious, but we were victorious. And we were all soaked in blood like a Klingon love story. Uh, <laughs> God. No, we, we had, we had a, 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 a red carpet screening at battle. And uh, yeah, it went great. We had uh, we they, they stuck us out in, at the San Diego Library. So San Diego has gotten so big san diego comic-con that they've started like for a while they've kind of been like the hotels next door they've had stuff at well now they've gotten so big that literally half a mile away the san diego public library hosts every day a huge spate of of, of panels and events and things like that and uh, so uh the, we were in good i guess the next question would be if it's growing that quickly how long until it takes over san diego period and we just rename san diego comic-con and just have it there 365 days a year how about no that would be monstrous to organize. Oh my god! Um, but so much fun. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, our screening went great. It was like really, really well received uh, by all the fans. We had a bunch of the cast there. We had you know Doug Jones, Ellen Dubin, Neil Kaplan. Um, uh, yeah, it was just it was awesome. Uh, Darren Jacobs and. Uh, what ended up happening, and you know, there's always folks when when uh, you're putting something an independent sci-fi show together who, uh, you know, how are concerned, you know, whatnot because uh, independent sci-fi can be so hit or miss. All those folks absolutely loved it, nice. uh, and so just incredibly well received, and um, kept hearing all throughout the rest of the con, you know, how much people loved it. So we were definitely, uh, and, and we were in good company out at the library with like how it should have ended and folks like that. Uh, stocking Lavar, all that kind of great stuff. Oh, so. I love the house should have ended, guys. They're absolutely spectacular. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm just I'm just disappointed that uh, I had to go back to uh, the uh, uh, booth right after, and I couldn't like hang out because our our panel was at the uh, uh, beginning of the day, and theirs was at the end. So I was like, no, I wanted to go say hi. Oh, there. There's probably lots of people you wanted to say hi to, but you couldn't get to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, at something like this, there's just so many people, and you're so busy running around that you're, you, there's no way you're going to get to everyone. There's absolutely no way. So, um, you also were running the Deadliest Fandom booth. Well, that was there anyway. How was well, that, it was how actually. That go? We had, oh, we're great. We literally had we had Gigi Edgley there uh, from Farscape, and she was amazing. She was doing interviews. EJ. And EJ's gone again. <laughs> God damn that warp core breach. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm giving her she's got captain. <laughs> so. Yay, Not Skype broke again. Yay, Skype broke again. Yeah, I'll just reset EJ's <laughs> hand and see if that helps. Um, so yeah. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Um, well, just... while, while, we're waiting, while we're waiting for EJ, how about if I just give the hobby report real quick? Ah, sure, why not? That gets it out of the way before we have to do the review, and we probably should get onto that fairly soon. Okay. So for today's hobby report, uh, news broke that Mobius Models has gotten the right to do the J.J. Abrams universe of Star Trek model kits. Nice. At Wonderfest, at Wonderfest they had a sign-up and they had a mock-up of the J.J. Abrams Enterprise. Uh, the poster they had showed the Enterprise, the Franklin, the Kelvin, and Spock's jellyfish ship. Nice. Uh, that jellyfish ship was weird. Well, yes, cool it is. Jellyfish ship. What do you expect? <laughs> uh, well, it was a custom-built the... ship that was supposed to be fast enough to save the Romulan Empire, but uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah, we're, do we're doing the model <laughs> report. <laughs> oh, the... sorry. It, it, I'll, I'll give you another minute or so, EJ, because we figured you dropped. I'll go ahead and give the report real quick. Yeah. Yeah, no, go for uh, it. You're, you're good, man. Um, there's no no formal details as to what scale they will be. Uh, speculation is we may see the models either late this year or very early next year. They think the prototype that they had shown was around 1 1,000th scale based on what would be classified as actual scaling and not the, um, I'm going to word this very politely, J.J. Comp overcompensating for his shortcomings scaling that they did, especially in, in uh, Star Trek 2009. You mean on the Blu-rays where they say that thing is like a kilometer long? Yeah. Yeah. But when you're sitting no. there and looking at Ellen going, no, that can't be right. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. But that's the hobby report brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Alright, uh, sweet. So anyway, EJ, you were saying, um, Gigi was at yeah, where'd you lose the booth doing signings and was doing interviews and stuff. And Oh yeah, so Gigi actually was doing interviews with cosplayers and celebrities and we got a ton of great material. There's a lot of great interviews that you're going to start seeing. Uh, on social media in the couple week, uh, in the coming days and weeks, uh, and also um, uh, some of the battles, like we had thousands of people weighing in on some of these battles, like the jo the uh, uh, Torchwood versus Supernatural one alone had like twelve hundred people weigh in. <laughs> Just wonder, that one. I wonder nice. what John Barrett said about it. You know, we were tweeting him, and we were trying to get him over to the booth and let him know that, hey, dude, you're losing a fight. You know, you might want to come weigh in. And, uh, you know, he unfortunately, was... he uh, he didn't stop by, but, he yeah, was just... it was fun. He was ridiculously busy up to his own shenanigans. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> there. Tom Barrowman's shenanigans. Yep. Yep. That guy's hand in Yeah, because that totally makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John Barrowman, yep, just shenanigans. So, yeah. So, yeah it, yeah, it looked like a lot of fun. There's lots and lots of posters up, uh, posters, pictures up on uh, facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom and on the Twitter account. So, make sure you check those out. Um, there's actually uh, quite a bit more on the Twitter account than there is on the Facebook page. So, um, Not surprised. A lot of people were using more more Twitter than Facebook. Yeah. Considering the medium. Yeah, of course, because the, the Facebook is sort of an overall wrap up, whereas Twitter is more of a live style system. Exactly, and it's easier to get something like quick out, like boom, out, 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 out. Exactly. And uh, yeah. So, so, anyway, what other stuff dropped at Comic Cons? Do it. We, we've covered the Star Trek. We've covered Deadliest Fandom. We know that there was trailers dropped for pretty much everything Marvel and everything DC. DC. <laughs> Man, you got Flash. You got a uh, Flash Point. Got a trailer. You've got um. What's it called? Suicide Squad got a trailer. Uh, Arrow. Arrow got a trailer. Wonder Woman. Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, 
Uh, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen, seen a Supergirl trailer actually. There wasn't a Super one, probably... Supergirl one that I saw. I haven't seen that. I know they had a panel, but I haven't seen a trailer yet. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. because of the delayed sort of picking up, they're a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah probably. Sleep. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, the 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 the, the list of stuff that dropped at San Diego Comic Con was absolutely insane. Um, I can hear EJ eating. Oh, I'm gonna go out and say a bold prediction right now. Just from the trailers we've seen. Uh, Doctor Strange, hands down, best movie of 2016. I think it's gonna be Ooh. Rogue One. I, I, Except well, if they've just shown all the good stuff in the, um, in the trailer. I don't think so. No. No. <laughs> they wouldn't screw over Doctor Strange. There's, he's actually re one of the really big popular, um... Characters. Convo characters. Well, so. he's so strange. How can he not be? <laughs> Badum. <laughs> but seriously, that trailer just messed with my head. Oh yeah, it, it's it's I, their I first to, big I, step I, I, in I a said... mysticism. So it's sort of interesting to see where they go. One of the rumors I heard is that um, in Thor Ragnarok, the scene um, the because the, they're already doing stuff for it, they had to get they got Stan Lee out and they did a heap of the Stan Lee cameo stuff really early on. Um, and the rumor is Stan Lee's cameo in Thor Ragnarok is Thor's hammer sitting on the table at as the at one of the parties that they're celebrating at. Stan Lee walks over the cloth, picks it up, wipes around underneath it, puts it back down, and walks off. Nobody notices. <laughs> that would be. I would just love to see him. I would just love to see Hemsworth's face. Yeah. No, no, no one notices. Every, they're all partying like, Aah! and he just casually walks over, picks it up, wipes the table, puts it back down, and then just walks off and starts, uh, just walks off into the background somewhere. And it's just <laughs> this one throwaway shot he that's just, just like... so much fun doing that. What the hell? <laughs> still th I still think the best came out was definitely Civil War. Yeah. Mr. Stank. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh. Um... Yeah, but Here's my question: What would ha what do you think would happen if you put uh, Robert Downey Jr. into um, Star Trek? Oh dear God! Oh God! Please be the new captain! Please be the new captain! <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> no, oh, that'd it be looks wrong like that's for every good. reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, Can you that's just picture Cap Iron Tech faces? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, yes, um, what Amy, you were still going. Oh no, I'm just going to share it through Facebook. I can't think of how to share it. No. Um. Oh, so much stuff at San Diego Comic Con. Just, why do you only happen once a year? <laughs> because I don't. Because think it takes a year to put time. together. Course, yeah. Apart from the fact that it takes a year to put together, it also takes a year to recover financially. Everybody that well, goes. let me put it this way. We're already planning for San Diego next year. That's how much time and effort goes into San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. So, well... And literally, it ended yesterday. Yeah. Well, just make sure if, if we're doing more versus pitches, you give me more than three days' notice. Sorry, man. That was like a last minute. Like, <laughs> oh, we should have pictures for all these. <laughs> That's my bad. I will take ownership of that one. Oh, but just... no, I have to say, you were awesome. You pulled through. You were a fucking champ, man. So that was oh, awesome. I'm just messing with you. I just think it's, it's like I did my chance to mess with you for once. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will take my licks, sir. I will take my licks. <laughs> Mind you, I more... earned those. That. The, the, it did make going out after you guys all went to sleep and playing Pokemon Go at from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock at night when it was freezing cold so much better. Ah, <laughs> uh, Pokemon it's like, Go. It's like, thank fuck I'm not staring at a screen! Wait. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Actually, that's the one thing that's going to be interesting at Comic-Con in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, speaking of which... All the Pokestops. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the funny thing is, EJ, over here, where the where Comic-Con and Supernova take place, is what we call the promised land in Pokemon Go, because every... Oop, EJ's gone again. Of course. Anyway. Um, 
because yeah, for those that don't know, pretty much every poker stop in Brisbane is along South Bank, which is right where the convention center is. So there is about a kajillion people there every day, give yeah. or take. So, and yeah. the noodle, oh dude, you guys need to go to the noodle markets. It's so good. Where is where's that? It's on the it's in South Bank. It is. Yeah, it's at the um, it's at the cultural forecourt, which is just near um, Kipak. Oh, that grassy area. Yeah. Oh, okay, they got a thing set up there, do they? They got like, dude, there's there's like, a, it's so busy there, dude. They must be just but raking the, it in with a hundred kajillion oh, dude, Pokemon the food Go is players so good. playing. The food like, is right so good. Uh, so. Like we so got anyway. through, and then we went for for walk afterwards. <laughs> like so full. So, yeah, and um, for those that don't know, PokeVision allows you to see Pokemon in real time, which is kind of cool. Anyway. That uses up so much battery power. Yeah, I'm, I'm following a very strict rule. I'm only using, using Vision while the footsteps are broken. When the footsteps are fixed, I'm going to stop using Vision. So, get on it, Niantic. Patch that shit. Um, so, yeah. So, that's it for... The footsteps is it... This footstep part is easy to fix. We just got to wait for the bloody um, pedometer thing to come out. That's what fixes that one. Yeah. So, anyway, that oh no, the not the footstep bug. The footsteps, as in the distance away from you. The distance ah. to the the actual Pokemon proper is stuck at three at the moment because they they patched it and broke it because that's yeah. a thing. Um, and they're still trying to work out how to fix it to, to rest, restore it back to making it so that the closer you get, the fewer the footsteps. That way you can actually track things down. Until that is fixed, I'm using Vision. Once that's fixed, I'm not using Vision anymore. So, anyway, I think it's oh, about time. Here's, we... here's yep. another thing for you about Pokemon Go, which I noticed last night. Um, I managed to track down... I managed to get this uh, program on my computer that shows me what Pokemon are in an area is at, and for how long they're going to be left there. Yeah, that's PokeVision. Um, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. This is a different one. It's not PokeVision. Okay. This is an, not a web page. This is a proper program. Um, last night, there were at about 9:30 p.m. There was a Vaporeon in the dry dock under the keel of Diamantina. Wow. Outside of business hours at the Maritime Museum, so no one could get to it. That is hilarious. Uh, I was just going. If I could, if I could have made it there in under half an hour, I would have gone for it. So funny. Uh, whoa, that's my ears. Whoever just ate whatever that was. Tic Tacs, both sides. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's time to move on to do the Star Trek Beyond review. So who hasn't seen it? Me. I don't care. Excellent. <laughs> So, next question. Who liked it? I did. It was alright. It wasn't the worst Sup thing I've seen all year. Compared to the other, compared to the previous installment, it was actually really, really good. Oh, oh, oh granted, compared to Into Darkness, it is really good. But I it was... is better than the last two. Yeah. Oh, but um, compared once to other... again, they screwed stuff up. Yeah, compared to the Star Trek proper it's a smoldering pile of crap as far as i'm concerned but i'm sorry you do not play friggin whoever the fuck's music that was i don't care it's it's irrelevant oh, Beastie Boys. <laughs> to, to, to 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 do the things you don't play that and then call it classical music that's not how music works <laughs> i'm sorry but no in, but in, the, that's in 100 the thing. or 200 years time the majority of the music, just like the music from 200 years ago, won't even be known anymore. 99.999% of music made today will not be known in 200 years from now because it just won't be played anymore. Because That's it, the thing. Things though. move on. But some things will be called classic. Like, like Michael Jackson will be called classic. Stuff like Over that. Over my dead body. Shut up. The, it the, will be. The, the, big, the big, most popular ones will be called classic. That song will not be called classic. It's a smoldering pile of crap. It's a new song that's just been released and was only thrown in there to, for, to make everybody want to buy it. And for me, that sort of product placement isn't worth shit and a movie loses four stars immediately the moment they do it. 
Sorry, yeah. rant over. Continue. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm uh, so tempted to get my phone and just play Beastie Boys to tick you off. I'll <laughs> throw you out the airlock so fast <laughs> and yeah, lock you behind it. Then you'd have to do it. the news. Yeah, then you'd have to do the news. Have fun. I don't, I don't give a fuck. The news. San Diego Comic Con happened. Done. Next. What? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, spoiler free version. Five minute wrap up. Um, an alien rocks up and they, they're halfway through their voyage and Kirk is a little bit like, I uh, don't want to do this anymore. Um, very sort of despondent. They go to Yorktown, which is really cool because that uh, credit where credit's due, the Yorktown is spectacular. I love it. It's named after the original name that the Enterprise was going to have. So, credit where credit's due, uh, that I, was cool. I full on love Carlo Bender's bones now. I really do. So, um, well, Carlo was just, just well, so, well the York is spectacular looking. In practicality, it's an asinine design. Oh it's yeah, spectacular on. But it's an asinine design. Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to deny that for a split second. Like, the tiniest little crack in any one of those hundred kajillion panels, and you get vented everybody into space. Like, it's it's going to be bad. It's, there's no way that can end well. And when you see a swarm of shit heading towards it, it's like, a wasn't that swarm a lot smaller a minute ago? And b there's no way in hell anyone is walking away from that alive. So anyway. Uh, as a space as a space station, it is pointless. It's sort of like Atlantis as a space station. It makes no goddamn sense because as soon as the shields go down, or in that case the panels, everyone fucking gets sucked into space and dies. Um, but it still looked cool. So I'll give it points for looking cool, but that's about it. Um, so they they dock there, and then an alien rocks up, and she's like, "Oh, my spaceship's been." Just- my spaceship's in trouble. You need to go help it. It's in the nebula that's just conveniently right next door to where the space station is. And it's like, a trap. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's not friggin' sus at all. So they they send Enterprise because apparently Enterprise in the giant R space station is the only ship there. Because Enterprise bar, apparently bar is... the prototype they're making. Oh yeah, and the prototype they're making. Um, no, no, no. It's not that Enterprise is the only ship there. Enterprise is the only operational ship with the with a navigation system that can get through the, the nebula. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, it's called Chekhov. Yeah. Speaking of Chekhov, he didn't really do much in this movie. Did anyone else notice that? Yeah, he was really busy in that film. Hmm. He spends a lot of time running around. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of times, like anyone else think Taylor is just Ray in Star Trek form? Yeah, God. Pretty much, yeah. Stuck on a stuck on a planet, Note... scavenger has a star, no family. Hmm. Note to self: Do a versus. Except those two. more use. Except more versatile and more useful because she knows how to fix things oh, yeah. and doesn't try to sell them. Oh yeah. So yeah, so anyway, they Enterprise rocks up, meets a giant space swarm of space bees. I'm gonna go with space bees. No space wasps. Space wasps. Because which proceed to space evilness. Yeah, space. They space. are the ultimate. They are the ultimate evolution of the Japanese uh, the... fighter planes at the end of World War Two. Yeah, pretty much. So they just get swarmed by. Well, originally the design is mining drones. They say later, but yeah. Anyway, it's swarmed by space wasps, which sting the crap out of Enterprise and absolutely destroy it, like we see in the the opening segment. Then we get a really cool, um, friggin' these are the Voyagers reference. These are the Voyagers, the finale of Next Gen, isn't it? No, no, it's the opening sequence uh. of all of them. Yeah. Anyway, the, of the original series, then Next I'm Generation. Trying, I'm trying to think what the, the Next Gen finale was, where the the galaxy gets destroyed. Or is that one? That of the was movies? the movie. That was the movie. That was the. That was um, Star Trek Generations. That's right, Generations. Yeah, we got an awesome Generations reference when the the saucer separates from the main body, which was the it was meant to do in the TV series, but was going to cost too much. 
Um, that was how they were meant to land. They were meant to fly the saucer into atmosphere and land, and then fly the saucer back up and redock, and then fuck off somewhere else. Um, but anyway, that's not the point. They managed to sort of try and escape with the saucer, and um, they proceed to do what they got to do and get their ass kicked and run around on the planet. It's really nice that they were buddy paired for a while. That was kind of cool. Um, and then the dynamics of... between Bones and Spock. Oh, it's great. It's like, oh, well, at least I won't die alone. Fadishes. <laughs> oh, that's just typical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seriously, like Carl, I, I, I thought Chekhov was my favorite person coming into this. Ch Carl Urban as Bones is fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is. He nails it so well. He uh, is literally the re the reborn McCoy. Oh, yeah. He is. Um, yeah, he did the McCoy. So, so, anyway, the shenanigans happen. They manage to uh, get the Franklin working, which turns out to be a pre-NX-01 class ship because it's only warp 4 capable as opposed to warp 5 capable. Why they didn't just go with a with a Enterprise era sort of warp five capable ship is beyond me, but whatever. Because um, they, they wanted to leave the anything from the TV shows alone. Yeah. Because that was because if they tried to put an Annex Zero class yeah, but, ship in, then they would have got did you see castrated the, by did JJ. You, you see the hull number on bloody. The, the hull? The hull number was... Like, NX-01 was meant to be the first of the interstellar ships. This thing was, like, NX-0, like, four more numbers. It was like, what the hell? This was NX-359. Yeah. And, which means that... So, that which is another shout-out to Wolf-359. Yeah. Um, Actually, there's a... There's a... Um, Simon Pegg and... I think it was uh, Mr. Lin and issued a thing saying that this ship was originally designed for or the Makos and for cargo transport and it was built before Annex 01 and after Starfleet was founded the ship was then pulled into Starfleet and left and the registry was changed to Annex with its original number but it, that's why it's still considered a Starfleet vessel but its registry is, you know, different, higher than Enterprise's. Okay. Well, then I can forgive it for that, then. If that's their sort of canon explanation, I'll forgive it for that. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, this whole... Oh, we can't forgive? The villain's motive. I'll let you cover that one, Stuart, because it's already started. This, this movie's already annoying me again, just by forcing me to remember it. It's all you. Go for <laughs> it. You liked it. Explain. I said it was all right. Hawk liked it. Hawk, you liked it. Explain. Go. I don't care as long as it's not me. Well, basically the villain, he's built up as this crazy alien dude that can, that's basically like a vampire. He can, he can suck the life out of, out of the people he touches. Yeah, effectively he's Turns like a techno wraith from Stargate Atlantis. He yeah. Touches people, sucks the life out of them, and then sort of regenerates himself. In reality, yeah, he's just a lost soldier from the pre-Federation period yeah, of it's... Earth, and he's just managed to get some sort of techno get his hands on technology on this planet after his ship has a massive issue and either accidentally goes into a wormhole or. Something or other, and he just loses his way completely and is out for revenge and wants to make the Federation suffer for what he suffered. Pretty much. Which, when you come down to it, is, is actually a better reason than some of the other plots that they've used in the past. Agreed. It's actually... Uh, his motivations reminded me a lot of Nero's in Nemesis. And th the problem is, because this one was done by Idris Elba, it was actually a lot better done and more believable than Nero's variant. I actually understood the bad guy as a character, where I didn't really understand Nero as a character. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, he brings his swarm of space be- space wasps to take on um, the Yorktown, which is an impressively large amount of... Well, it, it's very much lacking firepower, put it that way. It's almost Babylon 5 level sort of firepower. I, well, early I star bases did fun. lack firepower. Yeah, but in um, the Star Trek movies, we see the giant ass space station, this this sort of the cylindrical, the cylindrical, um, almost destiny shaped space station, and that thing could take down a fleet of Klingon ships without really trying. This thing, yeah, because like that was one was designed in a general direction. Well, the freaking one that you're referring to was designed and weaponized for the Klingon war, which has not happened yet in the Kirk timeline. In the Kelvin timeline. Uh, yes, it has. It takes place before TOS. The Klingon War takes place... The, the, the Star Trek timeline goes NX-01 era, Romulan War, Klingon War. The Klingon War is sort of ending in around the TOS era. And then Undiscovered Country yeah, is where th- it sort of officially ends. Yeah, but they've thrown all that shit out with the Kelvinverse. Yeah, but... Kelvin that's itself all been... takes place that's... during the Klingon War. The original version of Star Trek 2009 that was meant to have Klingon decloak and shoot the sh- and take the Nostramus, the giant pointy pointy ass ship, um, whatever the hell they called it. I think it was Nostramus, something like that. Anyway, take that thing hostage because it was they were meant to be getting the jump on the ship that Kirk was in, the Kirk was being Kirk's dad was in the um. Kelvin. The Kelvin. Yeah, the Kelvin. Said its name a minute ago, all of a sudden forgotten it. Um, and it was sort of meant to show that, yes, they were at war with the Klingons at this time. And how... But because there's never been any reference to it in the Kelvin-verse, they've basically gone and done yes, there was. whatever the there hell was they a, want. There was in, in Into Darkness, there was. When they went to, when he escaped to um, Kronos, they said, "Look, if we go after him into Klingon space, that's that's we're in the neutral zone now. So this is obviously after a neutral zone was established between the two. If we go into their space, then that will trigger another war." They said that in Into Darkness. And at what point have Star Trek movies been able to maintain a con- continuous con? sort of continuum well I'll, the Kelvin timeline universe is pretty rubbish but that's beside the point <laughs> dude we've got all I've got to do is look at bloody um again point at Nemesis and you've got Picard still a freaking captain and Janeway who's been back all of six six months at best as an admiral giving him orders when he was a captain when she was still a freaking commander That's seen because Nemesis. her character would have chosen after she got back. She was probably offered an admiralship, and her character chose to take it. Picard would probably have would have been offered at, um, admiralship, but he decided he preferred to be a captain. Because exactly. keep Which in it, mind, Kirk, Kirk makes is, the comment in Generations, you know, stay on the ship, you know, don't don't take a, a promotion. Exactly. But at the same time, I, the whole fact, things of everything that happened with Nemesis, according to the time date or the star date that it's given, was three months before Voyager returned. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. This is not what we're talking about. Exactly. They can't maintain a, a continuum with their own shows. So, what chance does a standalone offshoot movie verse that's throwing pretty much everything that is canon about the shows out the window got to gonna have of keeping the continuous continuum yeah but with if its it own timeline past events in its timeline then you've still got to look at those past events that's my point so anyway but that's the thing it doesn't and they they literally they literally said with this one that they threw the freaking the previous movie out the fucking window out the fucking airlock. Anyway, moving on. The 
the swarm of space wasps are attacking the Yorktown, and the the NX-01 comes screaming in and plays rock, plays what's whatever the whatever the fuck song that was. I don't know. Music of some description. It was a Beastie Boys song. Play, plays gibberish noise, and flies past the swarm, and the, the swarm self destructs out of pure. What am I listening to? And my first thought was, please God, put me in one of those ships. I want to die now. I was sitting there giggling because of how bad the song was. Get, they, get, they were just getting so distracted by how bad the song was, they were crashing into each other and blowing up. Yeah, it was just... And it's Spock's like, oh, they play classical. I'm like, oh, every time a time travel show... Maybe if something said in the future, play some shitty modern song and calls it classical, my brain's like, it burns. It burns. Well, when you consider that what the Star Trek universe at that time considers good music is what we consider elevator music. True. No. <laughs> Even still. It fucking burns. So I can think of worse things to, that they could be playing. Yeah. Um, the Wiggles? No, that'd still be better because at least still an improvement. That's that'd be a solid <laughs> improvement. Um, worse something worse. Heck so no. the boy bands. One of the scenes in in that movie that really annoyed me is well, at, well, b- both of them involve the. The Yorktown. The first scene in that was uh, when the Enterprise left the Yorktown the first time. And it was like they were moving really quick to get out of Yorktown. I'm going, uh... That's... Given the shape of the station, that's kind of asinine. Oh, yeah. I, I know. Thought, I, was I thought the they were just using thing. a linear catapult sort of thing. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, um, guys, you don't want to go that fast inside a space station. That's going to end really badly. All you need to do is slightly nudge something and you're all going to die. The second thing that annoyed me is when the Franklin goes into the Yorktown. And while it made for a really cool effect when you see it flying under the river, when it came up through the river and, you know, you see all the water splash and then... And a second later, the water's still there. I'm going, um, didn't the Franklin just poke a really big hole through there? Yeah. Shield. Energy shield. Yes, Star Trek has shields, but I don't recall them saying anything about that. And the other thing is... When you uh, see the, the tunnel originally, the hole... when you see the tunnel originally, you don't see any evidence of shields. It's solid metal the whole way down, all sides. Sorry, just had to say that. Yeah. And then you see that there's um, clear parts that you can actually see what's going through the tunnel. So basic, the way I figured it was the Franklin busted through that. And to stop all the atmosphere and water and everything else in the station from pouring into the center tunnel and venting it to space, essentially, that basically had a shield snap over the broken parts. A containment shield of some description. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so keep going. Keep going. Structural thing. integrity field. Yeah. It's basically what popped up on it. Yeah. Keep going, Eugene. Huh? Keep going. Those were the, the two biggest, Those were the two biggest scenes that annoyed me in the entire film. I mean, there were other things that annoyed me, but those two more than anything else, I'm going, um, who checks the science in this? Because they did a piss poor job on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, you checked it? They, they, they had... <laughs> Amy has a point. Um, like, they, they had a couple of, like, cool-ish scenes. Like, they mentioned that the the hull plate, the polarised hull plating has failed when they rammed through the door. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's a, that is actually a cool callback to um, Enterprise. And there is, like I said, there is quite a few moments where they do reference the older stuff and stuff like that. So, it does have its moments, but... Overall, I still give it a fairly average rating. Um, so, since Stuart's probably going to have a lot of Comic Con news, how much news do you have, Stuart? Uh, there's a couple of other things from outside of Comic Con, so. Yeah. So, how about this? Something a little bit different. Um, what was your favourite part, 
And what was your least favourite part? Going Scarecrow first. Oh, shit. Um, favourite part? Probably the destruction of the Enterprise. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> It was vis- probably it, visually, for different it was, reasons. <laughs> visually, it was impressive as hell. And least favorite part would probably be the, oh, let's just be a t- troll and cruise through the prison camp on a motorbike. <laughs> All right. Eugene, favorite, least favorite? Uh, favorite, once again, was the destruction of the Fugly Fries. Yep. Um, like like I said, I, I, I figured it would be for, for different reasons. <laughs> um, hey, what can I say? My favourite ship is a doesn't have a giant milk saucer as a, as a core section. Uh, least favourite, I think I'm going to go, while it was visually very cool, um, te- technically... As I discussed, I think my least favorite is when the Franklin comes up through that lake inside the Yorktown. Because as for for the scientific, technical reasons, uh, I find problems with it. Yep. All right. Stuart, favorite, least favorite, go. Uh, my favorite, it wasn't really a scene, it's just something I more noticed. It's how Jailer's staff can go from being a staff to a gun. Yeah. That's, like the customization cool. side of it was like... I realized, I was like, it's, she turned into a gun. That's a gun now. I like it. <laughs> um, least favorite? Um... Ooh. Probably just the backstory of Nero. Two? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Nero. <laughs> God damn it, I'm tired. <laughs> not Nero. I, I, uh, I can't even say it. Yeah, the, 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 the bad guy. The bad guy. Yeah, just his backstory is just. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, is if he? He's just got a severe case of PTSD. Yeah. So, let's see. My uh, favorite part for me would have had to have been. The end because it's over? Yes, that. Perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. Love it. Love it. The, the, the credits, because it's over. Uh, nah, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Uh, my, my favorite it wasn't part... wasn't into dark level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My, it did have a few cool moments. Like My favorite part would have to be Bones and Spock, and their interaction was oh. absolutely great. I just, if I had to pick a highlight for me, it was that. Um, the... Low point for me would definitely have to be um, the attack on the Yorktown. I just hate. I just don't like the bee bee swarm thing. Just, I just don't like it. I think it's stupid. Um, giant space replicator. Not the point. So yeah. So overall, I gave it a six out of ten. Stuart. Um, I'm gonna go seven just to annoy you. Scarecrow. Eight. Eugene? I'm going to drop it down to a five. That's cool. So we've got a, we got a running scale of votes. Five, six, seven, eight. So the average makes it a five out of ten. I like it. No. <laughs> <laughs> makes it about six and a half, seven. That's not the point. Um, <laughs> actually, it makes it six and a half, but that's not the point. Um, so anyway, I'll that's it, it for our Star Trek review. Um, like it a lot, love it or hate it, it's, it's definitely better than No Darkness, so. Um, oh god, yes. So anyway, Stuart, you've got five minutes to do the news! So yeah, um, I don't remember the video game Darksiders. No. Uh, you mean the game that I still can't play to this date because it keeps crashing my computer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, <clears throat> My voice, sorry. Uh, apparently, we're getting a, a Dark Souls remaster coming to Xbox One, PlayStation Four, and Wii U. Oh, look at that! You, yeah. you can break your consoles now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to mention that one. Um, so this is cool. Uh, Harry, the new Harry Potter uh book, uh, 
Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is the most pre-ordered book since 2007. Wow. It's Harry Potter, what do you expect? Yeah. It's like, that's pretty cool. Do you hear Pokemon Go is getting a movie? Well, really? How? Po- God. Pokemon, well, technically Pokemon's getting a movie. A live-action okay. Pikachu movie called Detective no. Pikachu. Oh, yeah, the Detective Pikachu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. But it's well, a Dr. direct Bates. result of well, how Bates. popular Pokemon Beep-boop. Go was. I was like, um, just considering you've got such a massive universe you could do live-action movies from, why the fuck are we getting a live-action P- Detective Pikachu movie? Of all this fucking it random doesn't... shit. It doesn't work. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, um, quick throw out as well. If anyone on the north side of Brisbane is still trying to get their hands on one of the on the upcoming Nintendo Classic console, Game Traders at Chermside still has a few available. Yeah, they'll talk about hard to get your hands on. Oh, the the um, the mini NES or yeah. yeah. <laughs> they sold it. I think Game Trader though. still has like three of them left with the single, just with the single controller. The double controllers are already gone. Oh, yeah. But hmm, there are, st- still they've Craig. still got a couple. <laughs> Craig, hold one for me, you bugger. Yeah. Put 20 nah, bucks would... on it, he'll hold it. He'll, he's nah, doing... he'd, hold it for, he'd hold it for me for free, and then I can pay it off straight <laughs> like, later on. Yeah. He yeah. would anyway, do that for me. Anyway, news. Anything else in news? Uh, so, uh, this is funny, um, The Rock is in Pokemon Go. <laughs> what? Okay, so, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's, uh, got a YouTube channel now, he's made a, a mock video, where he's, where the, where the guys from the Antic has put, has put him in the game. Oh, cool. They've made his CP, unlim- um, in infinite, and he smacks talk, and he smack talks you. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah, I don't care. It's Next. Slow week after Comic Con, it's a slow week after Comic Con. Everything's all Comic Con news. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's that's not that's not wow in a bad way. That's wow in a what the fuck. <laughs> like that, literally everything is just oh, might as well just mention it. Brie Larson is is is, is, is Captain Marvel. Yep. Cool. Moving right along. Uh, literally everything is just is all Comic Con. Like I'm just on all the news websites, Comic Con, Comic Con, Comic Con. Like, ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> so it's quite. It's oh, a... tra- trading was announced for Pokemon quite, like... Go. Yes, yes. I honestly, mm-hmm. I don't want trading in Pokemon Go. Why don't you want trading? How are you meant to evolve stuff? Um, well, because you can evolve from the candies. But um, I know there's specific Pokemon that need to be traded to evolve. That's not the point. Yeah, like, like um, what I mean is, you, you're just gonna have like people just camping areas, catching dozens of Dragonites, and then just trading them around. It removes the hunt from a game already have specifically that. for the hunt. We already have people camping those areas and having a bunch of them. I know. But yeah, I just see people selling Dragonites for like fifty bucks each or something ridiculous. At least, they haven't, at least they haven't made it so you can buy candies, then, then the game would just be dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, oh, and, boy. And, as soon as they ever do that, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm yeah. not playing this anymore. Yeah, well, not only that, it would be, Niantic would just be like, and all of the money. It's like, yeah, see that, um, see that building over there? Yeah, we just bought it to store the money. <laughs> um, Guys? Yep? So, yes, this just popped up on my wall, a bit of news. Um... The next, we have a Matthew Riley book coming out later this year, but yeah. I can safely say that his next book following that is going to be most likely utterly awesome, considering he's, he's at the Mayan currently temples. pottering around in Mexico at Mayan ruins. Yeah. So okay. draw from that what you will. He always goes to wherever he's writing his book. Mm. Yes. Uh, so that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you for joining us. We, uh, uh, we love you all. We really do. Um, 
it, this is the worst podcast ever, so yeah. Anyway, check us out on Facebook.com slash safe site, Facebook.com slash safe site, our podcast, Facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. Check out Nobility and all the other cool things online. Check out Perricane Hobbies and Garrison 7. Don't forget Garrison 7. I can never forget Garrison 7. Garrison 7 is awesome. So we will catch you guys next time, and I have exactly three seconds left. Bye. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Meow. Got the meow this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>